Hello and welcome to Aging Matters, a program presented by and sponsored by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging. My name is Ann Bartlett and I'm the Public Advocacy and Outreach Manager for the agency. Before we start tonight's show, I'd just like to let everybody know that we um, once again have our Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program available. Briefly what that is, it is uh, working together with the agriculture, with the state agriculture and aging and supporting the farmers and supporting and helping seniors. So what are the qualifiers to participate in the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program? You need to be 60 years of age and older or at least will be 60 years old by the end of this calendar year, December 31st, 2016, as well as have um, uh, an income that follows a particular guideline for the number of members in your household. If you qualify, you then receive four $5 checks to be used at identified uh, stands at many uh, farmers markets in our county. Uh, the program runs from June 1st and you can receive those checks by uh, qualifying and filling out some information. You can get it from June 1st through September 30th, but you can use them through November 30th. So for more information and specific details, please contact the Berks County Area Agency on Aging at 610-478-6500. And now on to our show. We've got a lot to talk about this evening. Our program is on the Senior Assessment Program. And my guest this evening is Dr. Roxandra Jadik, and she is the director of the Senior Assessment Program, plus many, many other important uh, titles and positions with Reading Hospital. And then to uh, Dr. Jadik's left is Epoline Falbert, and she is a licensed clinical social worker and coordinator of the Senior Assessment Program. Welcome and thank you. And thank you for having us. Um, I think this is a, a, most programs say they're the best kept secret, but I think this is a, a, a kept secret in terms of what is this program? What does it do? Who does it support or benefit? And all the details about the program and I so I really wanted to take the time to talk about it first of all it is part of the RHPN geriatric center or it is the uh, in the geriatric center so let's start with what is that and and then tell me a little bit about the senior assessment program and what it was designed to do so the geriatric center is part of the Reading Hospital Physician Network. Okay. Uh, we are there um, to geriatricians, Epaulin, who's our social worker. We have a nurse that is specialized in geriatrics, uh, as well as a psychiatrist that works with us with tremendous experience in treating geriatric patients. Okay, great. Um, and so the senior assessment program is how old? It's <coughs> over 10 years old. Okay. Um, we've been here in the community um, serving the geriatric population for over 10 years now. And again, huh? <laughs> 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 Who knew? So tell me, in, in the concept of the program, what was the Senior Assessment Program set up or designed for or to do? Well, the <coughs> whole idea behind the Senior Assessment Program is to help older adults, you know, live a quality and fulfilling life. Um, we see a variety of um, uh, older geriatric patients coming to see us for a number of issues, you know, from um, health uh, issues, memory loss, you know, difficulty uh, with ambulation, gait issues, uh, and very complex medical issues coming to see us uh, for this comprehensive evaluation so that we can come up with a plan to help not only guide the patient, the family, but also the physician that's involved in the patient's care. So clearly, if this has been around well over 10 years, <clears throat> there was determined some kind of reason that, or this, this was a missing piece in our community. So how was that determined that this was needed? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, for, for for, for once, uh, yeah, there is a lot of need because we, in here in Berks County, it's a lot. You know, we have a tremendous aging population with a baby boomer that's going to just go up 
And uh, the, <coughs> the issue is that uh, while most of the um, patients, aging patients, are very well taken care of the primary care offices, they are not really designed to respond to um, issues specifics specific to the aging uh, population like um, uh, memory impairment, uh, functional impairment, uh, issues with um, incontinence and so on. Um, so um, really uh, this program is a, is a new model that, oh. you know, it's very young model. Um, it, it's, it's uh, I think it's very, uh, not every community has it. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, so when we when it was started, wasn't very much known about it. You only think uh, the the main uh, purpose was to really really help those uh, people that cannot be helped by the primary care and to help the physicians in the community take care more efficiently uh, of those uh, type of patients. Okay, so <coughs> Eppeline mentioned about a, a, a comprehensive. Um, this comprehensive assessment. Mm -hmm. So then let's talk about what is involved. We're talking about a senior assessment. Mm -hmm. And I know that, um, again, some folks really have, um, oh no, an assessment. Mm -hmm. You know, I either have to reveal all my whole life and, and the history and the problems and my, you know, everything, or is there a test that I'm going to fail? And I, so I won't do it. Mm -hmm. So to put us all at ease, tell me a little bit more about the comprehensive, what are the parts of that assessment mm -hmm. to determine what or help us with? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing to remember coming for this evaluation is to have a better understanding of what's going on with your overall health. I think that's the key thing. The whole idea behind what we do is to help improve quality of life. So you are coming to us so that we can help you and guide you in making the best health care decisions, you know, for not only you, but your loved ones, um, you know, in the um, age range that we served. Okay. Um, the senior assessment, uh, when a patient comes to us, it's a two-hour evaluation that in, include uh, memory testing. Uh, like Dr. Jadik mentioned earlier, uh, we have a board-certified geriatrician mm -hmm. um, <coughs> who focuses on comprehensive medical evaluation, and Dr. Jadik can speak more about that. Uh, we have a psychiatrist that's involved, uh, focusing primarily on uh, behavior issues, you know, symptoms oh. of depression, anxiety. Um, as we know, patients with memory problems, they have behavior issues, so our psychiatrist is that's the primary focus for our psychiatrists to focus on behaviors and symptoms of depression and anxiety. And myself as a licensed clinical social worker, the focus is on psychosocial, looking at the whole pictures, you know, what's going on, what's the, what the home situation is like, oh, okay. um, and help guide the family in referring them to community resources, uh, help them come up with a plan. Um, the bigger thing that we do at the Geriatric Center is uh, not only a set look at review, looking at the overview of the health, the psychiatric piece, but also assess level of care. And, oh, okay. You know, is my mom, uh, should my mom stay be at home? You know, at 95, yep. I'm concerned about my mom taking her medications or not taking her medications. I'm concerned that she's not eating or she's forgetting to eat. You know, those are the things that um, we hear about often during the senior assessment. Um, so the doctors are equipped enough to uh, recognize based on the assessment whether this patient, you know, should be living independently. Um, or do we need to have more care at home, you know, to help make sure that the patient is safe in, in, at home. So, and I, I, and I want to comment on that because I think all of the things that you mentioned are all of the things that our agency um, has a lot of calls and questions about. There are many times family members who are um, concerned. What, 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 kind of what, where do I start? Mm -hmm. What do I do? How do I begin? Um, as you mentioned, you know, do they need an oversight? Should there be somebody? They, they come to us and say, can't you come out and just see what you think? Mm -hmm. You know, tell us what you think. And 
that's not really what we're trained and qualified to do. Um, and so it's great to know that there is this resource in the community because it does give them, you know, an idea of, I like the idea of level of care and what kinds of needs do they have and the services that then can then be put in place mm -hmm. after we know that type of thing. And, you know, sometimes it's just, as you said, the, <clears throat> the behaviors are also because there are some issues like Correct. depression and anxiety that may have been overlooked or not recognized right. um, either by the regular physician or um, a new you know, to the individual, and I think that, that looking at that overall, too, and not just this piece or this piece, right. really will help moving forward, and, I, and as you said, a plan, and that's what people I know calling our agency really want, mm -hmm. is help us look at what should we do, and what, what can we plan on, and, and help us to go from there based on this assessment. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about, do you want to talk a little bit about each of those components a little bit? Like, what happens? What do you do? Okay. Who well, wants to? Okay. So, uh, I, I think the strength and one of the important characteristics of this evaluation is, is, is that is, uh, is multidisciplinary. So we all take part, uh, you know, it's um, mm -hmm. um, done by uh, four, four professionals at one time um, in, in a coordinated fashion. Uh, the geriatrician, uh, the, what it does, does the comprehensive geriatric assessment, which consists on a very thorough evaluation of the illnesses and problems, and also with uh, an emphasis on how those impact the function Okay. and the quality of life. Um, a very, very thorough review of medication and interactions and problems with that. We are evaluating the uh, functional status and uh, uh, gait uh, and mobility as well as memory. Okay. And we try to put everything together in order to um, uh, kind of make a plan and uh, make priorities. Um, and not to forget, we also discuss the patient's preferences because I, I think that has a lot to uh, uh, weigh uh, in the final decision and final treatment plan. Um, so even in some of the things you talked about, they should be coming with their medication lists or their medications to have a good evaluation when you're reviewing something like that, when you're looking Correct. at their functional ability, I'm assuming they're, you know, doing some balance and some movement and things like that. Yes, absolutely. Well, what we actually do to help with this, we send um, ahead of time. I think um, Epoline does a lot of work ahead of time to collect oh, okay. the information because we know it is very hard to actually do it at one visit. Okay. Uh, and we send an initial uh, data collecting, um, um, you know, uh, form. Uh, that helps us in uh, doing this because I, we feel the patient has more information and time at home to, to mm -hmm. fill this. Um, and but yeah, and, and uh, we uh, really encourage them to come with uh, with the family as that's well, and that is ask. very important uh, piece of this um, because you know it's very difficult otherwise uh, to get put put all the pieces together. Okay, so there's some preliminary work that we're gathering information, mm -hmm. um, written information, and then also then when I assume there's an appointment made so that you can do some of the other things. Does anybody visit the home? first Unfortunately not, but no, that would okay. be a good thing. <laughs> but, you know, it's excessive at this But what we can do, and it's easier now that we are in the system, is we review the medical data uh, from the primary care. Okay. So, uh, so we know as much as we can about the, um, you know, the medical problems mm -hmm. and issues that there are. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk? No, I, I was going to say um, to put everything in perspective, so you have a good idea what to expect yes. with the senior assessment. Um, a family member normally would call us, you know, make the initial phone call to us. My loved one is having memory problems mm -hmm. or my mother is having uh, so many health difficulties and I really would like a geriatric evaluation or senior assessment. So there's a brief phone intake that is done over okay. the phone. Um, and based on that phone screening, um, I determine whether or not this patient would qualify for geriatric evaluation or a full senior assessment with the psychiatrist. 
um, immediately after that phone conversation, a packet is mailed to the family member to fill out those uh, papers. And basically, it's a detailed report requesting information about medical history, list of medications, all the specialists that's involved with working with the patient, uh, primary care doctor, cardiologists, any doctors that's involved. So that packet is sent back to us. We gather and compile all the medical history um, by having our nurse calling different doctors and getting those records to us. So we review those records. On the day of the assessment, uh, like I said, I mentioned before, it's a two-hour evaluation. Uh, the patient comes with a family member. That's something we ask um, for them to do because it's so much information. Yeah. It's very crucial that you come with someone else in order to absorb all that information. Well, and I would assume that typically because the, the family member is calling saying, I think they need this or please give us direction or help, mm -hmm. there is obviously an identified issue. Right. And so it would make sense that individual <clears throat> who's needing the assessment wouldn't necessarily be able to provide all of that information. Mm -hmm. And that's tiring, right. I would assume, in right. two hours. Um, so the day of the assessment, uh, we spend, the doctors spend time with the family member, uh, getting a thorough understanding of what brought them to the geriatric center. While all that is going on, the patient is in a separate room oh, okay. going through some memory testing uh, in addition to a vision screen. Mm. Um, uh, some different testing, you know, balance and hearing checks and things like that. Um, so as the doctors are completing their interview with the family members, they step to the next room to interview and assess the patient. Um, at the end, we meet with the family and the patient together. We go over what we think is going on. You know, these are the issues and this is the recommendations. We do that with the family and the patient together. Um, normally, we schedule follow-up appointments because we oh. want to make sure that if we are recommending, um, making those recommendations, we are following through on those recommendations as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, some of the things that came to mind that when I hear from folks that either call us or out at aging parent fairs or resource fairs where I am and many times the family members aren't even aware of some of those things to even bring along or present or provide where what are all the physicians that that individual goes to what um, you, you know the, the pieces and the documentation sometimes are not shared readily so it's good to know that that is what they're going to need ahead of time and it's going to be my emphasis to again reinforce with everybody, um, the adult child of, of an aging parent, the aging parent person, both of them not only, you know, talking about it, communicating about these key pieces, let alone because an emergency occurs, you want to be able to grab some good key pieces of information, whether it's their medicines or whatever, to be able to provide in an emergency, but here's a, again reiterating another reason for knowing where where those documents or information right. is to be able to present to you for that. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention about that whole uh, assessment piece. Can you give me just a, a quick example of maybe what findings are range like? The person may come in and you find out, you know what, it's really a mismanagement of medicines. Mm -hmm. And once you've kind of reevaluated that and maybe tweaked that in some way, and when you do your follow-up, you find that, that things have changed. They're seeming to do a little bit better. Some, would that be an example of something? Absolutely. Or what's another one? That uh, and I think that's a very good uh, okay. example you use. Um, we've seen a lot of our geriatric patient coming to see us. They have been on a medication for 30 years because it was started by a provider and, and nobody had the opportunity to review or assess those medications. And they come to us and one of our goal is to assess and screen those medications to make sure at 85 years old, should you be on this medication? Mm -hmm. um, you've been on it for 30 years. Is it still effective at right. this point? So, right. and that's one of the things that, you know, the geriatricians, and I don't want to take um, mm -hmm. the time from Dr. Jadik, but that's one of their focus. And I've been very impressed, you know, in the past several years I've been with this um, program to see how thorough and comprehensive 
the doctors are you know with the older adults because one of the things that doesn't happen with uh, our geriatric patients the primary care physician don't have the time mm -hmm. um, yes. the 15 20 minutes appointments it's not enough time for our older adults to really go through all their questions about medications they come to us for two hours and we are able to spend that time to really dig deeper in looking at do we need all this? Can either of you give me an example then of the plan after you've done that assessment and you talked about a, a plan that you're going to follow up? What might be an idea of a plan for someone? Well, um, so basically what we, we really look at the different aspects. First of all, we see if there are any, medi any new diagnosis. So okay. in case of dementia, we may, may, may decide that this is dementia or we think that it's just some cognitive impairment due to other medical issues or due to medication. Um, if it is dementia, we determine what type and what stage it is. Okay. And we also make recommendations on um, the whole treatment plan, like uh, we go over all the other illnesses and how we can change the way we manage them in the face of this new diagnosis. We look at the appropriateness of certain medications. We look at new lab that needs to be done and so on. Um, so, so basically uh, that is the other thing we look functionally like basically our goal is to see how can we improve the, this patient's life. So for that we have discussions throughout my examination I discuss with the patient and try to elicit like what it is important to them. What, what is the goal? for your life from now on. And then I look at all the medical issues, medication that we recommend and how can we change them to actually meet those, to help that person meet their goals if they, they want to maintain their independence, mm -hmm. their function. We look at all the, we make recommendations regarding the whatever, uh, you know, what preventive measures we there can put in place. We talk about safety a lot mm. because mm -hmm. that's important is, you know, uh, recognizing that a problem early enough, the earlier you recognize it, the more you can get prepared and avoid complications of a problem. Mm -hmm. So, and we have discussions about that. We educate the patient as well as the family on how to deal with those issues and we do a tremendous amount of education. And we also give support. Uh, because That's I nice. think, you know, it, unfortunately most of uh, the, um, at least 88 uh, uh, people above, above 80, they have some forms of impairment and they need help. And this is, a, you know, it's, it's very difficult sometimes for the caregiver. So actually we don't just treat the patient, we try to um, treat the, the whole. It's even comprehensive. Uh, absolutely, we that. address the caregiver yeah. as well. Um, um, is there... I, as you were talking about that and reevaluating and all that and, and, and the plan, is there then a recommunication with the, their own primary care physicians mm -hmm. or other key physicians as to, okay, here it has been what we've looked yeah. at, what we've discussed with the, the, the individual and their family members, so maybe you make a modification, you make a change, we think they should have therapy, we think this should be done. Um, then Absolutely. there's a communication. I, we, we, don't, we don't take the place and that needs, you know, we mm -hmm. cannot take the place of the primary care physicians. We are really a help and uh, we send a very comprehensive uh, plan to the primary care physicians after the business is finished. Uh, most of the time our nurse at least talks to their nurse and um, we may have one-on-one -on -one physician discussion when the situation is more complicated to discuss our recommendations. And I think so yeah, yeah, so yeah, we Im immediately after the assessment, mm -hmm. Uh, an after visit summary is sent with bullet points of what the recommendations are just to get a head start with the primary care physician okay. 24 hours a detailed report from each provider who saw the patient went wow. out to the primary care physician Super. the nurse follow up with the primary care physician on any recommendation for labs or medication changes and I also follow up with the family members as well uh, it's a intense a lot of information so yes. it's important to follow up with the family. I assume yeah. that kind of same thing is Correct. given to the family members is kind of like here's what we think should happen here the right. plan. this is right. kind of what we're sharing with the physicians and, mm -hmm. um, and I'm assuming you also provide a great deal of resources because you know yes that plan is good but somewhere down the line 
there's going to be further questions. So I'm assuming they're being given other resources that may be needed in the future based on that particular issue, conditions, and plan. Um, can they come and call and see you again? How, what happens then? And down the line. Yes. We always see our patients back. Um, for some patient, immediately after the assessment, we see a need for them to come back okay. to see us. And for others, um, because their needs may not be as severe compared to another, mm -hmm. the primary care physician can take over from there. But they can always call us for a follow-up appointment, yes. Okay. Um, in the few little bit of time we have, I want to make sure, can you talk about, real briefly, the cost for this? This, you know, you're taking a lot of mm -hmm. um, time and, and, and skilled individuals to provide all this, mm -hmm. those pieces of the assessment. How do I pay for it? Yes, the Medicare covers most of it. Um, okay. Depending on the type of Medicare, I think there are some co-payments involved. Okay. Uh, but as far as I know, right. so each provider bills separately. So the geriatrician, oh, okay. the psychiatrist, and the okay. colleen bills separately Medicare. And um, so I cannot give you numbers. It really depends sure. on the insurance. But most of the program is covered by Medicare. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. And again, a good thing to ask when a family member is calling initially mm -hmm. or to investigate. With their he with their insurance coverage, okay. would this be covered? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, referrals again. Um, you know, anybody can call you, whether it's family so, member, the individual. Yes. Us, anybody. Family. Can make that the patient can call. Um, okay. Anybody who who's interested in learning more about the senior assessment should certainly call the geriatric center. Which leads us to the graphic that we're going to put on on the screen now, as far as. How do you know more about the Senior Assessment Program? It's at the RHPN Geriatric Center on Van Reed Road in Wyoming. Missing. You can contact them at 484-628-2529. Certainly for more information, to, to talk about what it is and what their needs might be and share more information and then or get just some resources from you. So please give them a call. I, I, I uh, in one quick 30 second, any last, last word you want to say before we sign out tonight it's a pleasure being here and I hope um, you will take advantage of this program good I, I want to say that I, I thank you for tuning in um, I believe you'll find this a, a great uh, assessment tool that I know we have uh, shared with people who have called the Berks County Area Agency on Aging I'm so I'm sharing the senior assessment program with you tonight thanks for tuning in